That is dynamite in a small package right there. Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd with Bishop's RV. Welcome back once again to my Coldwater, Michigan hometown store here with the 22 RBS Cougar. And there are certainly other builders who make a layout like this, but I don't feel any of them pack as many big camping features into a small package as the Cougar. Take a look at this thing right here. So starting right up front, we have ourselves a 70 by 80 fifth wheel sized king bed. These are also standard with power corner stabilizers. So everything is just push button easy. The tongue jack, the awning, everything, just push a button. Uh, it's like scrubbing bubbles. It does the work so you don't have to kind of. Um, the uh, This also has a really aggressive hot cold weather package, zero to 110 degree rated, which goes beyond where most brands even think of doing anything in a uh, RV this size standard tank heaters and a whole bunch of other weather things on this to help keep it comfortable whether you're hot or cold climate camping now uh goodyear endurance radial standard on this it's all set and ready for tpms and it has a massive countertop and redonkulous cabinet storage capacity in such a small rig you can really tow small camp large in this little thing right here and do so in a lot of style and a lot of comfort um if you prefer things like the fancy tech packages it's got that in command package and if not it's laid out in a way and has a couple things that you can basically just ignore and circumvent that these also are factory standard with at least 200 watts of solar you can get a 400 or 600 watt package and these are coming with 200 amp hours of lithium batteries standard from the factory and that is an exceptionally uncommon thing. And in this size and class of travel trailer, I think uh, Keystone might be the exclusive provider of something like that. Um, now, the batteries even have a heating element. So if it's a little cold, the batteries can warm themselves up before accepting a charge so they don't damage themselves. Like, this is just really thought out through and through. Now, it's got a couple hiccups. Like, maybe you don't like the king bed. Eh, you could size down to a queen. That's easy. The road mode travel accessibility on this one is perhaps it's only, I think, major Achilles heel other than what you might think about the bathroom, but that's what I want to do in this video. I want to show you where it excels and maybe where it might not be the right one for you and let you decide if it's the right one or not. And if you appreciate that, hit that subscribe button, like our video and get rolling, baby. And now I won't mince words. I, I really like Cougars. I like Cougar RVs a lot. I think the things that they're doing, generally speaking, make a lot of sense. And I like how they're trying to pack a lot of big features uh, into every one of their RVs. Now, that means that they're typically a little more expensive than the average bear. And that means that they don't necessarily work for everybody. There's definitely still value to a smaller, simpler series RV. But this is a smaller 26 foot, basically tip to tail, tongue to bumper camper giving us a lot of big fifth wheel features in a small trailer package like standardizing 15,000 BTU air conditioners. A lot of brands are doing that. Cougar was one of the very first that did something like that. Going at that marine woven slide flooring right there instead of carpet. Um, a couple other brands were carpetless first, but they were one of the first to adopt that material. I actually do technically prefer it uh, when the slide floor and the main floor match. What's funny is that floor in the slide is actually a higher quality floor than what's in the main floor. So there's a difference, I guess, sometimes between aesthetics and um, and physical quality that don't always line up. But I'm okay with what's here. I like all the big windows. I like how there's dimmer switches on the lights there in the slide. Just a bunch of smart things. And even here in this small, the smallest Cougar uh, that they make, they're still using their Blade Pier air system. So there's a couple things to this. First of all, that has a residential filtration system on it to help keep the air a lot cleaner, which is nice. And secondly, their air vents and ducting pull more CFMs, allegedly. Uh, I've never seen any sort of like a hard side-by-side -side testing. I'm sorry, CFMs. If you don't know what that means, cubic foot per minute of airflow. So they're, they're getting more air from that air conditioner down here into the cavity of the RV to keep it cooler. Now there's a couple things that are, ha, you know, not, not for everybody. Like people go, why is there that big hutch? I can't really walk around the bed. Well, that's where things like your water heater would be located because there's limited areas to put them in other spots on the RV. They could bury stuff like that water heater uh, or maybe a furnace or, or whatever, other hookups, you know, that's there, there's stuff under there, uh, essentially. Now up front here, we've got a 70 by 80 king bed, but if you notice the mattress kind of hangs over the bed base a little bit, 
if you wanted to size that to a 60 by 80 true queen, you very easily could. Um, I like the uh, the dual hanging wardrobes. And in the back of the RV by the door, you're going to see another big, big potential closet space. If you're like, ah, eh, there's not enough, uh, you know, hanging storage in here. They've got a solution for that. The doors uh, for the cabinets over the bed. I like that it's cabinets that are enclosed instead of a shelf. But they don't have any kind of strut to hold themselves open. So, you know, that kind of fact I'm not in love with. Like I said, there's some there's some good and there's some things that could be better. But overall, I really like what they are doing here. Now, they've got a blackout roller shade up in that front windshield. And that windshield makes the whole RV look and feel bigger. Both sides of the bed have these nice little side pocket side stands with household and USB outlets. And then you see that light switch up there. That will flick all the main cabin lights. So like if the lights are on and you lay down in bed, you can turn the lights off after you get in bed, which is just a smart, easy little convenience thing. Now, if you wanted to, you could do that on your phone, but you don't have to now, which is kind of nice. This is only 30 amp service. They don't offer this in 50 amp. They don't offer it with a second air conditioner. So if that's helpful information to you, at least click the like button on the video. Let us know what we're doing is handy for you. But uh, there, there's also no power vent fan option for that vent above the bed. But this is a hollow constructed roof. So if you wanted to piggyback some power off of one of those ceiling lights to run a fan, you absolutely could. The uh, TV here, uh, up in the corner, you will see pivots around. And that TV outlet, kind of like the outlets around the bed, you may notice has a little yellow sticker on it. Um, any of those yellow stickers tells us that is an outlet that is uh, prepped and ready for inverter power. So if you choose to add an inverter to the RV, or if you get one of their more advanced solar packages that has one, those outlets could be run off your batteries. Although keep in mind, you're pulling more juice when you do that. Now, when you're looking at one like this with a sofa, no dinette, and a dinette is an available option, you kind of have a way around it. Because if you want to add a couple chairs over here, you could turn this into an elevated breakfast bar. And that black circle, those are just a couple little USB plugs. And this elevated counter isn't massive, but it's big enough if you wanted to put like, a, you know, a plate or something on there. You could make that work. Some extra household outlets down here where they're uh, pretty easy to reach. If I'm being picky, I would actually almost prefer a set of outlets against this little panel wall over here maybe down there uh, a little bit further. It just feels like a good location for me because uh, with a laminated sidewall, you don't easily get outlets down by the countertop where they're uh, more accessible. And you'll see some power outlets over there uh, under the overhead cabinet and over here as well. Also notice how you've got that entry door privacy shade that opens from the bottom up. We literally have Cougar to thank for that. Cougar and your input. Um, on videos like these, and I'm not going to say my videos were exclusively the ones that made the difference. I'm not, I, I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't believe that's the case. I think that, um, a lot of people left a lot of feedback and I know Cougar listens to feedback very, very well. Um, and they watch these videos for that feedback among other sources and they got the entry door supplier to change how they, uh, mount those shades across the entire industry. So we literally have Cougar to thank uh for for the shades giving us privacy while still giving us a little bit of daylight now as i mentioned if you want a dinette you can get a dinette it's a big u dinette actually which is how these almost always used to come if you watch my old videos people used to prefer the dinette and then the, the you know general consumer sentiment changed and some folks kind of preferred a little bit of dino for action more and more people are less concerned with how a guest is going to feel comfortable camping with them uh, all the windows open for airflow, which is excellent, with the exception of the window in the door. And that is a big 12-volt DC compressor fridge. So fast cooling, travel safe, easy to reach when you're going down the road. Uh, and I'll, you know what? Give me a little bit here, and like I always do, I'll close the slides up, and we'll take a peek at this sucker in road mode. But look at this down here. There's like a ton of countertop space, and you may notice that's a larger 22-inch oven. Not only is it physically bigger, but it is less inclined to have hot, cold spots as compared to uh, a lot of other uh, oven situations going on out there. Now, working up front here, we're going to start diving into some deeper details, opening everything up. I left that cabinet cracked over there because I don't like my reflections in the mirrors. I don't think I look good. So there's that. It's just my own personal insecurity. But you see how those are uh, hanging wardrobe towers right there, like we kind of mentioned. Now, the TV is a little bit flat mounted. And if I park my butt down ugh, back here in the theater seat, by default, that's kind of what you're looking at. But I mentioned that TV can pivot around. So if you want it to be less of a neck wrecker like this, 
Well, that gives you an idea what they could look at. They've got a nice footlocker storage situation going on under the bed with easy lift gas struts that I wish they'd use on the overhead cabinet doors and some privacy curtains. That is a feature that a lot of builders of this floor plan do not include. Cougar includes those extra little privacy curtains right there, which I think is a really, really handy feature. And if you start looking at the total cabinet and storage capacity in this thing, it's incredible. That rear corner, all the storage that's going on in that rear corner is absolutely fantastic. And you may have noticed, not only is that big and deep and just huge, it's like refrigerator sized. I think it's actually bigger than the fridge. Um, you, uh, It's even got hanging clothing storage in there. Let me ask you a really insane question. I've never thought about this before, but what if this RV had two refrigerators? Would that even make sense? Would you be open to the concept whatsoever of a second refrigerator in that back corner where all that big cabinetry is? Or would you prefer that to be the refrigerator and put a pantry over here where the fridge is right now? How would, or or leave it as it is. Nothing says it needs to change. It's just fine how it is, but just to let you know. And you saw the little motion light right there. We'll probably see that again later in the video, depending on how long certain things take me. And you might notice they are not using the peekaboo I smell you uh, bathroom door. They also are not using the fajita Friday fume fighting fan. Instead, we have the dollar store four inch fart fan. Again, not hard to improve upon, not hard to upgrade, but that's what she is. Lipitor storage cabinet. Uh, I like towel bars over towel hooks personally. And that extra linen cabinet up there, that is super, super handy because otherwise, you kind of got to take, if you forget to grab a towel and you get out of the shower, you got to take your naked butt outside and, uh, well, not outside, outside, I hope, uh, just out into the body of the RV, which, you know, never fun. You feel very exposed. Now, a lot of builders who build a floor plane like this, the bathroom space sucks. The toilet space is really tight. That is not at all the case on this one. Now, that being said, I could see some folks not loving this radius shower over here because... It does potentially limit your hel uh, elbow. <laughs> the elbow. I forgot about that. The elbow is uh, like your favorite WWE wrestler's uh, special finishing move right there. But elbow room. So if you stand corner to corner on that, you can get enough elbow room most of the time. It just depends on your personal size and stature. But notice a little bit over six foot tall. I was able to stand in that shower without my head necessarily needing to be in the bubble because this RV does have a vaulted ceiling. Despite having a six and a half foot sidewall like a lot of RVs, the, uh, the vaulted ceiling really opens it up in here. Now flip it around the other direction. You can see uh, we're still standing in the bathroom in case you were curious. The fact that we have a full direct line of sight on the uh, the main entry door right there tells us that uh, the bathroom's travel accessible. You may have noticed the light click off right there. It has a motion light right by the door that uh, it's kind of nice because it'll sort of like say, hey, welcome home without collecting a big old cloud of bugs right by the door. Now, the kitchen is obviously readily accessible. If we get over here and I close this bathroom door, you see that the refrigerator for traveling is completely unobstructed. So if you need to stop and grab a snack, use the bathroom, she's good to go. But over here, we've got that full depth floor flush rack and pinion slide. And you need a big slide, deep slide like that to handle true theater seat, high to bed or dining option, all of which are uh, available on this. The trick is with that elevated breakfast bar over there and the deep slide, it gets a little bit pinched off. Now, I tried to squeeze my dad bod through there and I was not fitting. Just not even like, oh, it was close. So you have two choices. You can either do a Dukes of Hazard yeehaw or you can nudge the slide a little bit. With this being a rack and pinion slide, you can slip past it. However, you shouldn't leave it like that and you shouldn't try to occupy that slide unless it is fully extended. So... That might be a little bit of a point of consideration and hiccup for you. Keep in mind, we've got other builders with similar layouts or different Cougar floor plans that can get you more or less travel access, depending on what you care about. And just like the inside, there are some awesome qualities and features to focus on while we're out here. I think first of all, though, I want to focus in on the towability factors. I think this is a really good fit for uh, the general descriptor of half ton towable. It will still depend a little bit on the half ton in question. There are some very, very light duty half tons that maybe are not a proper fit for something like this. But at 7,200 pounds maximum weight, fully laden with full cargo, 
and we're gonna say 26 feet tip to tail 25 foot 11 inches <laughs> but 26 foot tip to tail uh this is going to be something that you can tow around and handle nicely now we've always got at least 200 watts of factory roof solar and actually we're going to get to see that in a little bit here but you're also always prepped for a side mount portable plug over there and you see the little docking station that's just a place where you could hook up like some park cable or uh you know your your fresh water lines now our baggage doors uh notice how they're they're all slam latches which is really nice because they also use a different key from a lot of those butterfly twist lock jobs and they all have sealed protection protected hinges. We also have easy hand like magnet hold back so you don't got to worry about juggling that thing and dumping it on your head. Now I got the power cord down here which is just in a big old scraggle which is a technical term but you get the idea. But in a way it's kind of demonstrating the fact that we have a big pass through on this with full size doors on both sides. Now over here You've got motion lighting, you've got your uh, MPPT Victron charge controller. So even in their most basic solar package, they're using some pretty decent hardware. And when you step up into the bigger packages, you'll get bigger amperage on those. And then above that, you see an additional disconnect and some inverter prep. They have a separate disconnect exclusive for their solar panels on this. So if the RV's in storage, maybe you've pulled a battery or something like that. If there's a reason you wanna make sure you're not flooding batteries, you can actually hard disconnect the solar panel on this, which very few RVs offer. And that is a uh, potential major safety concern item right there. Now. Uh, up front here, behind the 30-pound propane tanks, which is already an exceptional quality, very few builders in a class like this are even doing 30-pound tanks anymore. Cougar's still giving us 50% more propane. You've got two 100-amp-hour Dragonfly batteries. And notice how they're locked down awful nice right there so they don't accidentally go wandering down the campsite without your say-so. It's just little details like that that they're doing on these. And I mean, those batteries, that is not an inexpensive thing. You know, there's a lot of features on this. And a lot of RVs, if you read the brochures, they have all these fancy widgets and whiz bangs. But if you really look at Cougar, they are doing everything they can to pack every feature possible into their RVs. And that's one of the things I really like about this one. This is the, uh, the I think like the smallest Cougar and pound for pound, <laughs> really well equipped especially compared to other things in the class now this is our in command panel right here this is basically the brain of the rv it's the central nervous system of the camper and notice how you don't have the traditional automotive blade fuses instead you have bus style relays keystone was also the first towable manufacturer to fully color code all their wiring now winnebago alliance a few other brands have started doing that since oh we've actually got the um oh no that's just the tpms prep cover right there sorry i thought the whole module was installed on that but what i'm getting at is uh, a few other brands have started color coding their wiring but all not all of them not all of them still do now just below the skirt line under that front awning arm you see that little white flag hanging down that piece of paper that is where a gas grill quick connect is located so if you want to grill under the awning you can you want to not be directly under the awning well you don't have to be I like how the windows are tinted. All the windows open for airflow, with the exception of the window in the door, but you can always use the screen for that. And the neighbors are going to hopefully love your music because those speakers are mounted up so high, they're probably the, the ones that are gonna get the best listen to it. I probably would just turn the outside speakers off. I would just use my phone or a Bluetooth speaker or something of that variety. TV hookups out here. Factory standard uh, Goodyear Endurance Radials is also another really nice touch. And as we weave our way back here, you see that LCI triple uh, stable step with the extra wide top plank. Now that extra wide top plank is really nice because it just gives you more footing when you're standing up there and jum jumbling your keys or whatnot. Or if you drop your keys, they can't fall where you can't get them as easily. The other thing, I can plop my butt down on that. It makes for a pretty decent makeshift campsite seat. Although I'm always in the way whenever my wife is trying to go in and out of the RV. It's kind of like, have you ever noticed how 90% of being in a marriage is just standing in front of the kitchen drawer that your partner needs? At least I've noticed that, I don't know. Tankless on demand water heater right here means nobody has to deal with the chilly willy showers. And we've also got a fantastic weather package on these. These are all zero to 110 degree rated, which is uh, going, a lot of people want to worry about the cold camp rating, but the fact is more of us are hot camping than cold camping. And that is something that Cougar does better than most any brand out there. Standard 15,000 BTU air, radiant barrier top uh, across the roof, 
down the nose and under the belly. The belly is like, basically there's like four heat ducts in the belly. So there's one that just generally heats the belly. There are individual heat ducts blowing hot air directly onto each holding tank. Each holding tank has its own tank heater. Uh, and uh, I mean, I mean, you know, it's enclosed, obviously. They do a really solid weather package on these. Now, giving you a quick peek up top there at the roof. Today, we're only looking at the factory standard 200 watt solar package, but you can also get the 400 package which also includes a, uh, a 2000 watt inverter. It doesn't include any batteries, but Cougar's already including 200 amp hours of lithium batteries. 200 amp hours of battery and 400 watts of solar is that golden ratio. Uh, a lot of people will say that for every um, amp hour of battery you have, you should have two watts of solar to support it. That's the best usage versus charge ratio. So the 400i package from Cougar is really, really strong that way. And it's even very upscalable if you want to blow up and expand it. Of course, you could always just go to the 600 um, inverter package and uh, even be able to have limited use of your air conditioner while untethered away from the parks. So what if you like this, but you want something where you can get to the bed in transit? Well, take a look at the 22 MLS Cougar. Or um, what if you just want a straight queen bed? Maybe you don't like the king thing and you want some travel access. Maybe take a look at the 2205 Rockwood. And what I'll do so you don't have to remember all this alphabet soup, I'll leave you some links in the video description. Not only will you be able to check where we have one of these parked in stock and available and what price they're running, but also take a look at some similar RVs with similar floor plans from other builders that we've had a chance to record for you. So if you like how we show you the good with the bad with everything in between and how we don't hit you with hidden fees after the fact. Subscribe to our videos, like us if you're a return member of the RV Nerd Herd, and we'll catch you next time. Take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.